Oh, now something else related to this whole in detention issue that I watched play out in Question Time today and that I want to call out for the shocking attempt at misrepresentation by Home Affairs Minister Claire O'Neill. Now, no surprises. I think she's one of the worst performers in the government, not only in terms of repeated displays of incompetence and bungling and repeated demonstrations almost daily, but she's clearly out of her policy depth, but she's also a poor performer politically. Now, those who haven't been around the parliament long, particularly women like O'Neill, think you've got to be shouty and some sort of fake tough to cut through. Well, that's not true. Competence equals cut through, and some of the most effective performers are the most clinical. On top of the detail, rarely caught up making the sort of policy, policy stuff-ups that O'Neill makes on a daily basis. Think Julia Gillard, not as PM, as Deputy Prime Minister. So to a former Senator, John Faulkner, Labor Senator in the Upper House. O'Neill's problem is she's loose with the truth. Andrew Clennell skewered her on this this week when he found those emails from back in September about the detainee issue that directly contradicted what she told him on camera in November. And today, though, she hit a new low, trying to blame the whole issue of the child rapist, the bloke we only know as NZYQ, on Peter Dutton. NZYQ would not even have been here were it not for the incompetence of the Leader of the Opposition. Order. I make no apologies for doing everything I could to get this person Order. out of the country. I'd contrast that with the Leader of the Opposition because he's the reason that NZYQ was here to begin with. Must have been in the talking notes because here's her hapless junior minister, Andrew Giles, as well, running the same lines. But I can tell you who did make a decision, Speaker. I can tell you Order. who did. The Leader of the Opposition. That's right. The Leader of the Opposition intervened as the then Minister for Immigration to allow the convicted pedophile at the centre of the High Court case, NZYQ, to apply for a new visa instead of seeking to have him removed from Australia. Uh, you've heard both of them. Here is the truth. Those claims by Labor are desperate and they're completely false. The Coalition inherited from Labor 30,000 people who were put on a community bridging visas out in the Australian society because our detention centres were full. And they were full because under Labor, under ministers like Chris Bowen and Tony Burke, still there on Albanese's front bench, 50,000 illegal arrivals landed by boat on our shores. And it was the Coalition, first under my old boss Tony Abbott, and then people like Peter Dutton, who were left to clean up Labor's mess and reintroduce temporary protection visas because, and that's right, Labor under Kevin Rudd, they had abolished them. And in order to clean up the mess, assessments had to be done by immigration officials on an individual case-by-case -case basis, on the basis of people claiming protection as a would-be refugee. Now, you can't determine what to do with an individual until their status has been determined. Are they a genuine refugee? Do we owe them protection? What's their claim? Do they get to stay? Or if they're not a genuine refugee, if they're not, can they be deported back to their country of origin? So at staged periods in time, Peter Dutton and every other immigration minister lifted the bar to allow a certain amount of people to make their application for a protection claim, a refugee claim. Now, this is not issuing a visa. It is not issuing a visa. Claire O'Neill knows that. Andrew Giles knows that. Labor knows that. There is a big difference. This is desperate. This is desperate. And I can assure you, if you're going to ask punters out there in the streets who they think, who they trust can keep the borders safe, O'Neill or Dutton, Labor or the Coalition, it's not hard. Seriously. It's not even a contest.